Hey Toolerinos, got another uh, mini tool haul for you. So, found some interesting items. Let's start with uh, kind of the turd on the table. Um, I'm not sure if this was a hammer or some sort of piece of decorative ironwork or something, but uh, I thought maybe I could grind it down and thread the hole and make it into a hammer of sorts, but I don't know, we'll see. It's kind of the challenge of it. You know, it's it's a pit monster for sure, but just it's heavy. I don't know if it's cast or what it is, but um, I'll try to do something with it sometime. This here is probably the next least interesting. Uh, it's a flathead screwdriver, but I hadn't seen one like this before where it has this sort of um, uh, screw holder feature. Now, this isn't necessarily the right size screw for this holder. It's a little big, but you see how it works. So you could drive it in. When you get part way in, you pull that out, slip that off, and then this goes back in. So you can uh, finish driving the screw. Okay. Interesting tool. Uh, there's no marks on it or anything. So, I don't know, it's not old or anything, but just different. Uh, this. This is a very neat looking tool. The color is beautiful. The rubberized handle is nice. Uh, yeah, it's got the striker on the back because it's a chisel. But it's also a rasp. Right? It's got uh, a round and a flat and then a little edge set of teeth here. But I'm, I'm not a big woodworker, so I don't know if this is really a useful length. It doesn't seem to me like it is. Like, I think this would be a gimmick tool, right? As a chisel, I'm sure it would work fine, unless, as part of guiding the chisel, you want to put your hand here, uh, because you'll get all chewed up, right? Um, so I don't know, you woodworkers out there, is this valuable? Is this actually useful? Or is this a gimmick tool? You know? Let me know. Uh, next thing here. Uh, it's an old kitchen... 25 cents. It's an old kitchen funnel, right? But neat thing is, it has these replaceable or removable uh, screens. There's a have larger hole, smaller hole, and I'm not sure what the point of that thing is, but you can have them in or out, and it's a funnel, you know? So I can see myself using this in the shop to uh, screen out the uh, solids from used evapo rust or um, simple green or something, you know? So I'll find use for it in the shop. This one, and I've got another one I'll show you sometime too, but uh, I'm going to blame Big Vic for this. <laughs> <laughs> he showed us that neat uh, dragster looking uh, sprinkler and I thought man that was pretty cool looking so now I, I spotted a couple neat old sprinklers and this one is uh, the LR Nelson Manufacturing Company Peoria Illinois just like the uh, the red sprayer nozzle I showed before but this is uh, nice solid plastic wheels and this is all brass this is aluminum. This uh, rod down the center is not magnetic, so I'm thinking that's stainless steel. And I think this is a brass spring because it looks brass and it's not rusty. And uh, this thing is in actual workable condition. See, every time this snaps back, it kicks it over a little bit. And uh, number 13, apparently, uh, Rainbird. So the Rainbird up there. Uh, just needs a, a a gasket, a gasket washer. But yeah, I was thinking I'll take this apart and polish all these parts up and repaint this, and it'll be beautiful. And uh, my only real concern is how do I get off these springy metal clips? I think I can just you know destroy them, you know clip them and then pry them off with a screwdriver or whatever and destroy them. But then either I gotta find some replacement ones or do something different to keep the wheel from coming off. 
I'm not sure what this material is. I don't know that it would take to threading very well uh, with a die. I could drill a hole and put a little uh, cotter pin through it or something, but I don't know. Does anybody have any tips or tricks for how to remove these uh, without destroying them? Uh, or should I just destroy it and find some replacements? A little advice on that would be helpful. Next thing. I picked up one of these um, caliper measuring tools and you know I've got a couple of these already but this one is so coated in patina. <laughs> Uh, you can't really tell if it's a Starrett or a Brown and Sharp or some other nice brand. It seems well made, so I want to clean it up and uh, let's see what it is. Now the, the arms have a little bend here, but they both have that bend. And the tips do line up nicely. So it may be that it's supposed to be that way. And just in case any of you watching this aren't familiar with these tools and don't realize, this is the spring. This is gripping the two ends of this arm and it's squeezing them and that is what uh, makes the spring action in there and then here is your adjustable um, screw that goes down this threaded rod but you notice this is split if you squeeze it together to take the tension off this little collar slides off and then if you squeeze that see how it opens up and you can open it uh, adjust it to any position you want slide that back and then there it is. And of course you can still thread it in or out for fine adjustments. But uh, I don't know if just unless you really use one of these things you might not realize that that works that way. But uh, oh the patina on here is so awful. This if you can tell is supposed to be knurled. <laughs> the knurling is completely full of patina so it almost seems smooth. So this is going to be fun clean up to see what the brand is. Next, this is a saw filer for sharpening a saw. Uh, it says here, Shebel Universal Saw Filer, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, USA. And uh, I looked online and all I could find is a reference to this in an ad in popular mechanics from the 40s, from several issues in the 1940s, but it's very adjustable. Uh, this part allows you to raise and lower the file relative to the these guides. Um, you can rotate this and rotate the, the file that you put in uh, left and right, and you can change this angle so that it allows you to set an angle on your teeth as you sharpen them one way or the other and then this is kind of snapped in with a, as a spring and you can pop this out and loosen this screw and you can change your file uh, so it is pretty cool it says it's universal and I believe it it's been used based on the scratching under here I'm not sure what the point of these are they're marked with numbers but uh, they're not movable I'm not sure what the point of that is um, so lots of adjustments for lots of different saws. I'm sure that's why they call it a universal saw filer, right? Uh, I got this at a, another sale and you know, it's for the uh, lathe to use on the lathe out in the shop and it works, right? But it's missing the holder to set the, the, the gauge adjustment. Um, it's missing a screw there, it's missing a screw there. So, you know, it needs a little cleanup on the face and it needs some a few screws put back in place. But otherwise I expect to be able to use it for the lathe. And when I was out, well, at the same place where I got the turd, <laughs> um, I saw this and they basically just gave me this. Um, it's like an indicator and you can see that it moves but this, there's no spring action. I think the spring should be under here because when I open this, you can see the other end of that. That rod is in there that moves and, uh, and it just falls on its own in there. So it will work. So I got this basically because I wanted this holder for the other one and I was hoping these one of these screws would work 
to fix the one I want to use. So uh, I just, you know, as I'm looking through the camera, I can see there's something strange about the face. So here's like a dark side, and then there's like a pie shape of lighter color here, and then maybe another one here. There's something weird about this. Um, let's open it up and find out. Now, this is just bought for parts. So I wasn't planning to fix this. This one's a little chewed. That's pretty nasty. But look at that. Sizes three and four. And there's a plus and minus there. It's like this was being used uh, to calibrate something or as a quality control check on something with a very fine range. And so they covered up all the other marks with some masking tape, it looks like. Yep. There used to be more marks visible. It's under tape. Interesting. If anybody has any uh, information about that or what I should expect, um, why that is that way, let me know. It's that time again, Tularinos! You've dialed into the blast to the present! Alright, does everybody know what this is? I had this when I was a kid, and I'm sure other kids had it years before me and so I was just pleasantly surprised to find it still being made there made in USA it says it on both sides of the ball and uh, you can still buy this I bought this recently at CVS and on the bat it's uh, it says official wiffle bat made in USA and it's made in Shelton Connecticut the guy who invented it, uh, David Mulvaney, um, he invented it in the mid-50s. And it's a way to play baseball, you know, for kids on a smaller scale in a safer way because the ball isn't very heavy and so it doesn't travel very far. And so, yeah, I was just pleasantly surprised to find that you could still buy a brand new wiffle ball and bat. And uh, it's made in the USA. Huzzah!